How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ride Along. You know, as always, I say we have a great guest lined up and one I'm personally really excited for and really interested in, Mr. John Bunch. He's a sports photographer who has really been working in photography and interested in photography since he was in high school. He was on the yearbook staff of his high school in 1988, and since then has really fell in love with journalism, photography, even should have got his degree in it. Uh, he's done photography, journalism on the side. He's now the communications manager at Texas A&M University, Texarkana, as well as being a well-known sports photographer. Uh, just being from Texarkana, I know he volunteers a lot of his time taking pictures for students at the local high schools and stuff like that on top of his already really busy plate. So we're glad to have you here. Very excited. Uh, just, you know, to kick things off, can you kind of talk about, I know I briefly mentioned it, but <clears throat> what your career path and your career journey has looked like in your own words? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. We never end up doing exactly what it is that we think we're going to do. And there's always, you know, uh, the, the path that people take to get where they end up is always, you know, that's that's some of the best parts of the story. Mm -hmm. um, I got a degree in journalism from Washtenaw Baptist University in 1995. Um, came out and did PR work for a nonprofit for a couple of years. Um, it's one of those things where you, you know, you have to pay the dues. Um, you're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week for almost no money at all. And yeah, I did that for a couple of years and I actually had a chance to jump over into some retail work. Uh, so I sort of stepped away from communications for a while, um, worked for a couple of different companies, uh, moved around a little bit with Office Depot. And then I moved around quite a bit uh, running stores for Dillard's. Um, and then in 19, I guess it was 2008, uh, I needed to make a career change. I wasn't in a position where I could uh, relocate every year, year and a half. So uh, I started doing photography full time. I was living in Arkansas, and uh, that's just really sort of where it took over from there. Uh, as far as being a you know more of a career, and, and yeah, I've always done it part time. Um, but you know, in 08, 09, around there, I really started working full time at it. And then even you know, I call it my side hustle, but it's almost like having a second full time job. It's it's a mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty busy, but you know, it's a uh, I enjoy it. So before 08 and 09, when you were moving around a lot, was it hard keeping it up? Because if, if you're moving to new areas, were you having to just try to find new clientele? or was it Yeah, it, it was. And, and you know, you, you would, you find some people and meet some people. And, and some of this too is, you know, before, you know, before social media was very prevalent. So mm -hmm. it's pretty tough to move into a market, say, you know, in oh, gosh, what was it? Oh, six, I think it was. Dillard's moved me to Knoxville to run a store there. Well, Facebook was just taking off. Right. Um, it's not like you can move into a place and immediately advertise in the yellow pages. And so, yeah, when you move around like that, there were a few years where it was kind of hard. Uh, word of mouth a little bit and people would kind of understand that you had a hobby and, you know, you sort of put yourself out there and maybe do bridal fairs and things like that to try to get, you know, work some clientele in. But yeah, it's a lot easier now um, being able to promote yourself online than, than I could back then. So what were your first couple of clients like? before you really you know, decided that this was something you were going to pursue? Was it typically friends and family? family? Uh, yeah, it was friends, uh, friends and family, uh, engagement photos, senior photos, newborn photos, stuff like that. Um, weddings. I still don't do a lot of weddings. It's not my favorite thing to do. I enjoy it, but that's not really my, you know, um, I, I've got one booked, I think next, uh, about a year, 18 months out. And, and I really don't, it's typically friends and family who will come and ask me to do them. Uh, and that's about, it's just not a part of my job that I really, really market. I guess I could if I wanted to. And if we don't start playing sports again, I may, <laughs> yeah, I may have to start shooting weddings. Right. So 08, 09, that's a pretty interesting time to be thinking about getting into a new field. Obviously, it was, you know, middle economic recession going on, felt by a lot of people. Yeah. What did that look like for you that, you know, you decided well, to start settling down to a different industry, different field. It was, you know, it was really, for me, it was a matter of necessity. Um, my first wife had cancer and passed away when she was 32. I was 36. Um, and Alex, I was managing a store for Dillard's in Knoxville. And we moved back to Arkansas. It, you know, if I had been on my own, it wouldn't have been as big a deal. I could have continued on that career path. But I had a four-year-old daughter. Um, and that's not a lifestyle, that mobile lifestyle for, you know, it's not conducive or not good for a, a single parent, let alone an only parent. Um, so I, you know, I, I had some money stashed away and was able to sort of um, just kind of back off and launch the photography thing full time. Uh, do that, you know, it took about a year to really get it going. But fortunately, I had enough money saved that I could just sort of 
Yeah, it was a step away from from the craziness of the, you know, retail is not nine to five. Like I said, it's constant. But, you know, step back from that, spend some time with my daughter, start working on building up clientele with different sports leagues in the city where we lived and things like that. And, and uh, we just kind of went from there. Uh-huh. So maybe what, what did that look like in, you know, Texarkana specifically would – and locally, just, you know, contract you out for the season, specific games. How does that? Yeah, I mean, it's – we've only been back here for about seven years. So, mm-hmm. I've, I've finally gotten to the point now where we've got several leagues that we do. Um, you know, I approach them and offer to do league-wide photo shoots like the, the soccer association. Uh, we did our first year with them back in the fall. The spring got canceled, of course. Um We've been with the upward basketball, one of the upward leagues here in town for a few years. Um, and basically when I do that, I'll, you know, I'll start off with a phone call or an email or something. And uh, you meet the people and you'll have a sit down and, you know, sit down with them, make a proposal. When I do a full league, um, it's a little bit like working in a school. Um, you give them back a certain percentage. Um, and it's, you know, it works for these the smaller sports leagues. It helps them, you know, pay for upgrades to, you know, it, it does anything from pay for referees to wow. help pay for stuff that goes into concession stand. They don't, you know, they're not necessarily making a lot of money either. So uh, mm-hmm. we don't give them a ton, but we give them enough that it makes it worth them letting us come do the, you know, come do the, the pictures for the whole league uh, so that we can give them a contribution back. And, you know, over the years, gosh, since 08 or 09, uh, we've, we've got to have given back, uh, it has to be, between 20 and 30,000 to different sports leagues around Arkansas and Texas. I mean, it's, you know, we, for a while we were working with almost 400 teams a year. Um, so it was, it was quite a bit. Yeah. So are you, were you independent at that point? Was there anyone on a team with you yeah. or were you doing it on your own? No, just, it's just, it was just me. Um, starting out, it was just me. Now, when we got to Texarkana, we started branching out a little bit. We started going up into Little Rock. We took over some soccer leagues up there that were huge. And some of them were so big that for each shoot, we had to have four photographers running at the same time. So we would hire some other photographers. And as our girls have, have you know, uh, we've got one now that's in Clint Smith's photography class at Texas High. We've got another, an older daughter that went through it. So, you know, they've, they've been able to start helping and, and contributing. Uh, that makes it nice. If I'm paying somebody, the money stays in the house. Right, exactly. Uh, so the startup costs for photography are usually really high. And for the photographers I've spoken to, like, yeah, surprising to me how expensive a camera was, and on top of that, how expensive the lenses and stuff like that were. So yeah. when you were just getting started, did you kind of already have stuff that was set aside that you'd always had? Did you have to upgrade to new stuff? Or what is that? No, look- I had to. I had to upgrade, uh-huh. you know, and, and you you have to do it incrementally. Um, right. it, it wouldn't have been prudent for me to, in 2008 to have gone out and bought a $5,000 camera and a $10,000 lens. Yeah. Now, a couple of years ago, I made those purchases because I was to a point where I could, you know, more easily justify it based on the kinds of things that I'm shooting. Uh-huh. And, you know, you're able to pay them off faster. I, I started off with a, you know, mid-range, um, you know, sort of prosumer model mm-hmm. camera, Canon 40D, D4, 40D, I think it was, um, and a 70 to 200 lens that cost Fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. So I started off with about, I don't know, thirty-five hundred dollars worth of equipment, um, and sort of made it work. And it doesn't. I mean, it sounds like a lot if you're not in it. Yeah, but, it like a lot. You know, these guys that you see, you, you see these guys on the sidelines at a, at a college football game, and and most of us are carrying close to thirty grand worth of cameras around. You know, wow. it, it's it it's a it's it's expensive but at the same time you can't get the kind of shots that ESPN and SI are looking for unless you've got equipment that's you know going to help you get that so how did you get plugged in because maybe kind of let some of our viewers know what after 0809 what it started looking like for you and how your business has developed and whatnot well from the sports side of it it was you know I got to I my daughter was playing softball t-ball at the time and uh you know we were at the ballparks and there's not anybody out here taking pictures of these kids these would be be a fantastic way to sell pictures of of people that are you know that have kids playing so i literally started off at a friend's friend of mine had a daughter playing softball i got permission from the coach to take pictures i had some little business card looking things that were weren't very professional looking i printed them out on a desktop you know the uh, inkjet printer and handed them out to the families. I'd made a website where I could start selling uh, and started doing that. And from there, I started asking more coaches or I'd get permission to shoot a tournament or sometimes when you shoot 
the tournament, you have to pay them a vendor fee up front to, you know, come get in. Same thing to people, you know, people selling t-shirts and necklaces and trinkets, pay a vendor fee to set up. So yeah, I started doing that. Um, and that's how I started getting going with some of the action stuff, um, which I still do. I'll, I'll do some more this evening. I've got a couple of T-ball teams I'm working with tonight. Um, but the, the sports, the big sports end of it, I started out, I lived in Jonesboro at the time. And uh, I just literally just sent an email to the sports information director and said, hey, listen, this is what I do. I live here in town. I've done this for a while. Can I come take some pictures for you guys? And they said, great. Yeah, absolutely. They're always happy to have, you know, people volunteer to come to come shoot. So I started volunteering for um, Arkansas State. Mm-hmm. And then I did that over the course of a year or so, so much that when they actually had some had money to contract and hire a photographer, they, you know, they wow. called me to come shoot a golf tournament. They pay me, or they contract with me to shoot the indoor, the conference indoor track and field championship when it was there. Um, you just sort of start building your your clientele that way, or your not clientele, building your portfolio a little bit. So yeah. once I had done that for a few years, and, and I even, I you know, I took some trips with them. I traveled and, and worked the Nebraska game uh, at Nebraska and uh, worked a couple of bowl games with them. I really making much money. Basically, I was working for the opportunity to go, and they pay my hotel room and food and that stuff. But it, that built my portfolio up to the point that when I really started wanting to do this more and I started shopping around, I was able to hop on with a, a wire service called Icon Sports Wire. And then from there, you know, I've gotten to go other places, and it just sort of it sort of snowballs. I mean, even. I guess three or four years ago, I'd never shot a Razorback game. So I emailed the SID in Arkansas Mm -hmm. and said, hey, can I come up and shoot the game? I'll give you guys some pictures. And they said, yeah, we'll let you come up. We really don't need any help. We'll let you come up and shoot the first game, Um, you know, because it won't really be a big deal. You can come take pictures. And then, you know, they weren't going to commit to letting me do much. Um, But I guess they liked what I sent them. Uh, One of the pictures was the inside cover of their media guide the next year. And uh, they invited me back to shoot some bigger games and, I don't get up there a whole lot right now. Um, right. Basically, at this point, if you've got a choice of going to some place where they're struggling or some place where they've got bigger, you know, bigger teams, uh-huh. um, you're going to take the place where you feel like you can make the most money long term in sales. So, you know, if I can go down in the Texas somewhere and catch, you know, Baylor and Oklahoma. I'm going to do that rather than go catch Arkansas and Ole Miss because it's, you know, long-term there's a better chance to sell those images. That's, that's a good point. Cause I mean, you've shot a lot at AT&T stadium specifically, right? Or you've done yeah. That's my favorite place to work. Yeah. So how does, is your path the way you've gotten started by, you know, just building a network, you're starting to email coaches and things like that. Do you think that's pretty standard for other people in sports photography or is it? Yeah, I, it's, I, I think ESPN. Well, I think a lot of them, you know, are, are coming through photojournalism programs um, and doing more photography um, as an undergrad than probably I did mm-hmm. or coming out and getting internships with bigger universities and, you know, places like that. Some of it's a little bit, you know, I, I went to a real small you know, university for my undergrad um, and then I've lived in some smaller, smaller markets or like, you know, Texarkana is a fairly small market. There's not much going on here sports wise at the collegiate level other than, you know, what we've added at a and Texarkana. So um, obviously I have to travel to shoot, uh, to shoot, you know, college football and, and uh, things like that. But yeah, it's, I think a lot of it now is internships. Um, you see people that have degrees in sports marketing, sports management that do some photography too. And, and they sort of work some of that into internships and then you can get into, you know, different places, but it's, it's pretty tough to make a living full time as a photographer. Um, it's almost impossible in a market like this. Um, if I were somewhere in Dallas, Houston, someplace with, you know, with a number of professional sports, um, I, you could, you could do it more easily, but from here, it'd be pretty tough. Right. So yeah, I know, I know you mentioned this t- briefly, the wi- wires that you're plugged into now or something like it yeah. is, is this an agency or a group that you're plugged into? They kind of tell you which events to go to or how are you specifically contracted? Yeah. Okay. So can you talk? Maybe it, 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 go yeah, ahead. It, it's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a wire service. It's like a news organization like AP or Reuters or Getty. Um, the name of it is Icon Sports Wire. It's a little bit smaller. Um, so you're not going to get as many, you know, AP might get three or four people into every football game at AT&T Stadium. Uh, our wire service will get one or two. Um, but you still get a chance to cover everything. They're at every professional sporting event, every college sporting event, you know, 
in the country and in different things around the world. It's definitely, you know, global, but the way, the way this one works, they will occasionally reach out to me and say, Hey, we need you to cover this. Can you come cover it? Um, and when they've got something like that, they pay you, uh, they pay you a game fee, an upfront fee, um, which is what some of the bigger wire services do. And most of the time it's me logging on to the schedule according to my, you know, at working at A&M in the fall, I've got to first look at what our schedule is because I've got responsibilities to my, you know, my full-time employer. So I, I can't miss, and we don't have football. Our homecoming is at a soccer game. So I've got to make sure I'm not scheduled out of town on a day we've got something major happening for my, you know, a real job. Wow. Um, but I'll go pick the games that I want to work and just uh, basically you just click it in and say, hey, get me credentialed. And if they can, they will. And then you, you know, you go in and work the game. They do give us, um, for football especially, there's kind of a hit list. They'll mm -hmm. send out in August, early August, and it's just, it's hundreds and hundreds of players. It's mostly juniors and seniors that they think are potential draft picks yeah. or interesting picks or, you know, so you, you take that list every week and, you know, I take that list and I take the, you know, we, we call them flip cards. It's like a, like a, a two page roster or a front and back roster that they put in the media rooms and right. it's got all the Jersey numbers and all that stuff. And I make a little card that I put on, on the end of my lens on that big lens hood. Um, the people that, that they've got highlighted that they want you to make sure and catch, you know, because right. it may, you normally might not think about taking pictures of the center a whole lot. Uh -huh. uh, but if you've got a guy that's playing center that's projected to be, you know, a first round or a high first round draft pick, yeah, you're going to make some money off that if you can get some good images. So, yeah. you know, the standard action stuff you've got to get, and it's, you know, you, you get all the stuff that they want, all the other stuff you can. They, you know, we take pictures of cheerleaders and bands and everything that's going on, fans, you know, little kids in the stands with their face painted, um, mascots, everything sells. Um, so you got to get a bunch of it, but you know, the trick to, to working in that environment or, or doing that sort of work is you got to get back to the, to the workroom as quickly as you can and you've got to upload it. You have to caption it. You have to, you know, put the numbers in and there's some software that we use that speeds that process up. Um, but you've got to caption it right. And you know, these guys are picky. They don't, you, you can't halfway do it. If, if you keep sending them, uh, captions with punctuation mark or punctuation problems or grammar issues, they just won't credential you to work an event. Nobody has time to edit and correct. You literally will get kicked out if you're unable to, you know, caption things to the certain, I mean, it's, they want the date here. They want the stadium here. It's, it's extremely specific um, because they've got a certain way that it goes out on the web and a certain way that's advantageous, you know, as far as people searching for the images. Um, and then I make money residually when the images are sold. Now it's a smaller wire service, so their catalog is not as extensive, but the thing I like about it is they have a reciprocation agreement with AP and Getty, which are, you know, Getty's the largest in the world. So everything, as soon as it hits the, the icon wire, it's also put up on Getty's wire. So most of the things that I see on the internet or in magazines, when I, when I get something that's printed, uh, it'll say, you know, photo by John Bunch, Icon Sportswire via Getty Images or Getty Images via Icon Sportswire or something. So it's, you know, Getty takes a little bit of my cut uh, in the process. But on the flip side, I've got my work on the largest, you know, database of, of stock sports imagery on the planet. So it, it's well worth giving up a little commission to have that sort of, you know, I mean, you've been, have your work. You've had your photos featured in Sports Illustrated before. ESPN. Yeah, I don't know that I, I don't know that I've had one in print. I, 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 for a few years, I, I didn't even get a subscription. I finally started last year. I was selling SI enough stuff that I, I bought a subscription so I could check. Uh, and of course, everything you know died down this year. But yeah, I sold quite a bit of digital online stuff to SI and ESPN. And yeah. And so that I mean, do they just contact you directly and say we'll pay you this much for it, or do they go through? No. The, the wire negotiates all that. There's set fees based on the way they're going to use it. You uh -huh. you know, and it's usually most images you've got to sell tons and tons and tons to really generate much money because you're not making a ton on every image. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be just a few bucks or maybe 50 bucks. It depends on how they want to license it. Now, two years ago, I had LSU in Miami uh, at the opening game of the season in at and And I generated a $500 commission off of a picture of the Miami mascot, which just wow. sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty somebody, somebody bought that. And at that, at that kind of, at that kind of rate, they must have licensed it to use to make um, posters or something like that, but they were going to resell over a certain quantity. 
you know, so there's lots of things that factor into your, you know, how it's going to be made. Like a cover for SI pays a certain amount. It's quite a bit more than just a standard digital image. So that's all negotiated with the, with the wire service. Um, basically, I just, um, I can't ever really tell where my images are going or where they've been until I get, uh, once I get a check, then they show up on a spreadsheet and I can see where they all went. So wow. my trick and it is, it is to, I'll go in and I'll just Google my name and icon sports wire and wow. every few days and check and see, and that way I can see if stuff is, if stuff's selling or not. So, yeah. So have you gotten any like special perks or when you go to these games, like the LSU Miami game you mentioned, what is it like, you know, what time do you get there? Are there special perks you get from being there, being part of the press? Is there special food catered yeah, for you? It's, your own stuff? You know, the ball games are the best um, because they give out, they give out swag to the, to the press, just like they do the players. And it's not as extensive, um, but the bigger the bowl game, typically the better the, you know, the, the prizes are You're given briefcases and blankets and uh, with the AirPods and the, you know, just lots of different stuff. Um, some are, like I said, some are better than others. This will be my, if we have a cotton bowl this year, it'll be my sixth year working for the cotton bowl athletic association. And I got on literally with them, called a friend who used to work with them. He called a guy, they put me on. Uh, and again, the first year I shot just the game. Um, but then they were so pleased. They've invited me back the last few years I've spent oh, four or five nights um, in the Omni. They put you up in a, in a, in a really nice room, the media, media headquarters. Um, they turn a ballroom into basically like a Dave and Buster's just for the media. There's food nonstop, games, uh, TVs everywhere. Wow. Um, gosh, it's, it's, I mean, and then there's different events that you go to. I'll cover Battle of the Bands, and there was something you know, last year. Was it last year? No, two years ago, I was, I was covering one of the events in Notre Dame's team, their little team uh, mm -hmm. lounge. So you're in there with the players kind of hanging out and taking pictures of them while they're playing video games and, and uh, you're, you know, playing cards and pool and ping pong and whatever, you just kind of hang out with the players. And um, a couple of years ago, I shot a concert, a Lady Antebellum concert, one of their bigger, bigger events that the Cotton Bowl put on. Um, you know, it's a small, small venue. So you've got a, you know, a very, very well-known musical act right. in this building smaller than a lot of churches um, and you know about 250 people in there so there's there's some pretty cool parks that get to go along with it um, yeah it's it's almost so much fun that it, it feels like stealing when they send you a check so is that bowl game your favorite to shoot for if you had to choose one yeah I, I like that um, I've, I've worked in the sugar bowl a few times for different you know there's a, a couple of different bowl games that are played in, in the sugar bowl or in the in the superdome um, I did work the Sugar Bowl this year. Um, AT and T is my favorite. Um, it's the the photo work room that they put. There's there's two. The people who work for the Cotton Bowl staff get a little bit closer room, uh -huh. um, so it's right off the tunnel. I don't have to carry all my gear with me. Yeah. Um, it's the only place I've ever worked where the 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 bowl staff will bring around bottled water to the people working the sidelines. Um, uh -huh. So I mean they really they take care of you. Other places you're you know, you're huffing and puffing and on your own and it's a thousand degrees outside on the turf and you right. know, some places too. I, I like working in Fayetteville, but the, uh, the photo work room is all the way over in Barnhill Arena. So you this can't just run and change lenses real quick between quarters. It's a, it's a haul. So you've got to have everything with you. It's just, yeah, at and it's a, it's a fun environment, you know, a couple hours away. It's easy to get to, it's easy to get in and out of. And uh, yeah, it's just, they take care of us pretty well over there. I usually work four or five games a year in AT&T. What is your schedule? You know, obviously coronavirus messes <clears throat> everything related to sports up. But in a normal year, is it, I mean, how many sports are you typically covering? Obviously you have your commitments to Texas a and Texarkana, but then just on the other contracted side, is it football, baseball, golf throughout the entire year? Or what does that look like? Yeah, it goes, it goes year round. I don't do a whole lot. You know, in the winter, I don't travel and shoot uh, college basketball very much. I have a little bit. Um, but now that we've got college basketball here in town, uh, it's just easier for me to stay here and, and do stuff for us. Right. Um, you know, summers, I would normally have already been shooting some at, uh, at Arlington. Uh, I requested, I haven't gotten an email back from the editor yet, but uh, I put in a couple of days ago to shoot a, I think next Wednesday is one of their last training camp days uh, for the Rangers in Arlington. So I'm trying to go over and work with those. Uh -huh. And I've put in to get, I'm trying to see if I can get credentialed to the, I don't want to catch opening day. It'll be, 
kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So I put in to see if I could catch the second game, uh, the 25th. I'm not sure who they're playing, but the Rockies, I think. But I'll know next week if I'm going to shoot any you know, Major League Baseball next week. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, by this time I would already have done some of that. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I haven't done any golf in a couple of years. Um, again, this year I'd sort of made some plans and, and kind of lined up where I might travel and where I might go in the spring, but it all sort of fell apart. I try to go to the Masters every year. I haven't gotten gotten credentialed to it yet, but I'm going to keep keep putting it in until they let me go. So. Um, so if you had to guess out of, you know, every weekend, how many weekends are you out shooting something, what would it be? Oh, there's very few weekends where I'm not taking pictures of something. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't even know how you would – you would, they would, you would guess. Uh, there's only, gosh, I bet there's not 10 weekends a year where I don't have a camera in my hands doing some kind of work for somebody. If it's not sports related, then it's, you know, senior portrait season and stuff like that. But uh, football season, once football season starts, I'm shooting usually somewhere every weekend. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times if I can't catch a weekend game, uh, I can find a Thursday night game close enough. Right. Um, it might be division two, but I can, I can find some work to do mm -hmm. um, on a Thursday night, you know, somewhere near enough that I can get there and get back. So the football season is pretty much on from August until, you know, end of November and take a little break. And there was one year I, before I got remarried, I, I bounced around and, and I think I hit seven ball games in one year, um, which is pretty cool. And that's any football fan's dream right there. Yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. So I, I, I hit everything. There's three or four smaller bowls in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I hit the cotton ball. I hit with the, with the Texas bowl and went to the, somebody, I shot the Sunbelt's bowl in the, in the, um, in the Superdome that year. I caught the Independence bowl. I, yeah, I was, Anything I could drive to, I, just the, the timetable lined up that I could just go from one to another and uh, camped out with family and friends in different places to keep it cheap. Uh, that was that was a blast. So, I mean, have you ever considered just, you know, only doing photography and, you know, the country tout, or is it just what you like that balance of, you know, working at Texas and Texas County? You know, I, I, like, I like the balance of it. Um, I like the – Again, it's not, it's not really an option for me where I am here. Right. I'd have to be in a bigger market somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of it depends on what, it, on what the job would be. I don't know that I would, at this point in my life, want to just do it full-time mm -hmm. the way I would do it now, working for a smaller wire service. I'd want to be with a bigger one that maybe paid you a little bit of game, you know, game check every week or every event plus your commission. Um, at this point, most of, that, most of that income is kind of fun money. Mm -hmm. um, I get to go travel and, and watch the best athletes on the planet. And then every once in a while they mail me a check, which is just okay. a bonus. But I'll work for yeah, I mean, but there's, you know, I, I'm, um, I know the girl, her name's Kelly Gavin. She's the team photographer for the Texas Rangers. And she's been with them for a number of years. And that's, that's a dream job. I mean, she literally, she has a 12 month contract. She's doing their fundraisers in the off season. She's working with the, I mean, she travels with the team. Normally, she goes to spring break, spring training for a couple of weeks. I mean, she's in every ballpark in the country, and you know they pay her to do nothing but hang out in the dugout and take pictures, which is right. remarkable. But unless there were something like that, I don't, I don't think I'd do it full time again. Uh -huh. it's, it's a lot of work to try to make enough money to live off of it. That's true. That's a good point. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I have two more questions. Sure. First one. Personally, out of all the games you've gone to, all the games you've shot, any sporting event. What would you say is the most enjoyable, fun, crazy event that you've been to where afterwards you were like, wow, like, that was insane. I cannot wait to get uh, look at the photos I have. You know, the, <laughs> the crowd at the Byron Nelson was, was pretty amazing wow. uh, a few years ago, the last time I did it. Now, it's not, it's not an easy tournament to work. It's pretty spread out. It's hot as I'll get out. Um, uh, but when, when it was all said and done, I had a lot of good images, and I, I made a lot of money off that one. That was, that was pretty fun. Um, you know, the bigger the, the, every so many years, the Cotton Bowl hosts. Uh, you know, it's a it's a BCS semifinal. Right. So we had that again a couple of years ago with um, um, Clemson and Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more fanfare and pageantry around that one. They they wow. everything gets kicked up a couple of notches. Mm -hmm. Those are always fun. Uh, I've never worked a national championship. I think my dream jobs would be to you know I, I really want to work a Masters for somebody. Um, and you know, if I could get to, get to a point where I could take a couple of weeks off and travel and work in the Olympics, um, oh, that would, be, would yeah. be way on up. That's, you know, and there's, 
think they're planning to come back to somewhere around LA in I don't know, 26, 20, it's all off kilter now, but they're, you know, in a few years, so in the back of my mind, I'm just trying to already figure out how I can put myself in a position to so maybe get, get time. Time, you know, work on Olympics would be, that's, that's way up on the, or in, in, way up high on the, the bucket list, I guess. That is about the epitome of sports fans. That's about the, yeah. you can go to. So final question, I don't want to take too much of your time, but, you know, looking back on your career on, you know, Personally, if you could go back and give advice to your 18-year-old self who was just graduating, who just participated in photojournalism and yearbook and stuff, what would be your token line of advice from looking at your career to now? Oh, I would, I would definitely, I would tell a younger version of me to do what you enjoy the most. Um, not stress about things like money. I mean, it's easy to say that, but you get out of school and you've got friends that are making money and they're making more money than you and they're doing different things. You're like, man, this sucks. I, I could go over here and do something else and make a lot more money. I mean, and when I, you know, when I was an executive with Dillard's, I did. Um, I'm, it's been years now. I still don't make base salary anywhere near what they were paying me. They, they paid me a lot of money to run those stores, but I didn't see my family. And, and you know, I missed a few things with Abby growing up, but what I missed, I think more than anything was some time with my wife there before we had Abby, um, you know, and, and I, I let that get, I let it get by me and, and, you know, you never know how life's going to happen and what, what's going to come your way. Uh, you know, we lost her at 32. So I can't, I can't make that time up later. I mean, I'm remarried now. I've got a you know, great family, two great stepdaughters and everything is, is perfect, but, I would tell my 18 year old self, look, do what you enjoy and spend time with, with your family and take care of the things that, you know, really matter to you. In the end, you know, it's all money. If I want to go make a lot more money, I can go do something to do that, but I'll do that later. Right now I'm enjoying, you know, time with family and friends and getting to do this photography. And yeah, I, I think if I, had, if I could do it again, um, I would probably find a way to stay in the journalism field mm -hmm. and not take that. I must've been 12 or 15 years out of it. Um, I, I would have stayed in and I think I would generally have been a happier person all that time if I've been doing something I enjoyed as opposed to doing something to try to make as much money as I could. So. Right. Well, thank you again. Really, for, I think that was, you know, the best answer you can really give. Glad to do it. Uh, just, I'm going to make sure, I want to link his stuff because, I mean, there's a lot of cool photos to look at for everybody that's interested on Facebook and Instagram, would that be the best? Put the website on there? Or yeah, something? Facebook, uh, the website's actually the easiest way. I'm not real good about, in fact, I'm about to turn the social media over to my daughter and let her let her manage that part of it. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, bunchphoto.com. There's there's some, if you just scroll down the, the front page of that, you'll see a lot of pretty good stuff from uh, the last three or four years, and most of it is sports related. So there's some pretty fun stuff on there. Awesome. Well, to all our viewers, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I did, and I learned something, which is always a valuable thing to say at the end. Again, we'll have his website linked. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next one.